Hey, what's up YouTube? Eric here, and I do apologize. We don't have any video this time because we saw the movie over the weekend. So it's just gonna be audio. I'm gonna throw up some photos for you guys. But I'm here with Josh. Say hello, Josh. Hey, Literally, how you guys doing? Alive. <laughs> you guys requested Josh on this review, and I always love reviewing movies with Josh because we get a good perspective of all of our films. And we're going to be talking about Doctor Strange, which was a movie that is about a character that not a lot of people knew much about. Even comic book fans didn't know that much about Doctor Strange uh, going into this film. We kind of had an idea of what the character represented with magic and mystical elements of the Marvel universe. But a lot of the, he's one of the deeper cuts. I think, what do you think, Josh, do you think he's considered a deep cut character for a lot of people? Oh yeah. It's like myself, I'm being a huge X-Men fan. I most mostly focus on X-Men and their villains and side characters and all that. I knew of Dr. Strange, but not too much as uh not too much his backstory, what well, in depth in his backstory and everything. I knew that he mostly dealt with, you know, mystical and, you know, the mystical arts right. and uh, yeah. stuff, interdimensional beings, which X-Men kind of sort of touched on, but he went just delved deep into that and all that. Like I said, I knew more, I, I knew of him, but not too much. Right, right. So coming into this, for you, it was kind of like a clean slate. You just wanted to see what they did with this character and what the movie was like. Yeah, then. sort of clean slate-ish. It was like, yeah, I knew of him, but yeah, I'm still interested to see exactly how, basically how they portray him on the big screen. Right, right. Okay, so let's talk about uh, Benedict Cumberbatch as Doctor Strange. I always like saying his last name. Yeah, I it's can so barely funny. pronounce it. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, what do you think of him as Doctor Strange? Do you think he, in your opinion, that he represented the character the way you know you would see him in the comics? Do you think that that's? Did you feel he was Doctor Strange to you? No, yeah, for more or less, because I pre I really didn't care for his performance in uh, Beyond for uh, was it Beyond the Darkness, the second J.J. Uh, Abrams Star Trek. Yeah, movie? the yeah. second Star Trek. Movie. I yeah, did yeah. not care for that version of Khan. I, I'm I'm a huge fan of Ricardo Montalban. I'm sorry, but <laughs> this one I thought he did. I'm mean, not to say that um, Benedict's a bad actor. It's just I didn't love in that particular role. He, he did the best he could with what he had. But in this, I think he did a very good job as portraying uh, Doctor Strange. Right. So I sort of felt like uh, watching the movie, he gave me that Robert Downey Jr. vibe with Tony Stark. Like he, he felt like to me that he was the character of Stephen Strange, of Doctor Strange. Like I just, to, he came into it and I, and once I saw him as the character in the film, I was like, okay, this is Doctor Strange. Like, I didn't feel like that anybody else could play that role at this point. <laughs> so, you know, I think he did a great job, in my opinion. Yeah, well, at this point, yeah, I can, it, not that is established. I can see anyone else. But uh, at the beginning, I mean, you know, before, when, during filming and all that, I could probably see maybe some other actor. I can't name me off, off the top of my head at the moment. But uh, especially right. there was the one part where you're uh, – he was talking to the, his one physical therapist. He just praised his girls, look, bachelor's degree. I was like, oh, my God, this guy's a dick. <laughs> right, right. He, def he definitely played uh, asshole in this movie. So I think he d nailed that for sure. Um, okay, so let's talk about the ancient one, because that's the character that we get introduced to at the very beginning of the movie. Uh, Tilda Swinton is the uh, the lady who plays this character, if in case you guys didn't know. And... um. You know, this character is represented as a, uh, a male character in the comics, an older male, uh, an Asian character. And they kind of played with that a little bit. I don't know if you caught it at the beginning of the movie when he walks in and he's addressing the guy with the beard and stuff sitting at the table. Yeah, the he H1. pretty much addresses everyone. But when the actual uh, ancient one comes up to serve some tea, he's like, oh, yeah, thank you. Then he turns right around to the old Chinese guy thinking that's the ancient one's like, nah. Right. Yeah, exactly. So I thought that was that was a nice little nod. I, I do think that Tilda nailed the role. Like for me, as far as the ancient one goes, it's a role that could have been interchangeable because that character, like I'm not, um, I guess I'm not, he's he's not a character that matters to me in the comics in the sense that I'm, I'm married to the way he's portrayed in the comics because he's not even around in the comics anymore. And so seeing her come in and play this character, uh, I was worried, or I don't want to say worried, I was concerned about how she was going to portray it based on all the controversy surrounding the changing of the race and gender of the character, because not only do they change the race, but they change it from a man to a woman, and I know there's a lot of controversy about that, but to be completely honest, I loved her in this role, and, and 
seeing her fighting in the fight scenes with uh, the combination of magic and martial arts, uh, I think that was a highlight of the movie for me. Yeah. How did you feel about that? Yeah, I was kind of uh, iffy about it once I heard about all the controversy and everything, but it's good. Especially when it came to Fantastic Four and how they had Johnny Storm as mm-hmm. a black guy. I mean, you know, as a black person, I kind of thought, like, okay, wait a minute, why? But after <laughs> I saw her performance of this, it kind of just went away. Like, no, it, she, she was pretty good. I like it. Yeah. There's always controversy about that stuff. I feel like Marvel, though, the Marvel Studios, not not like the Fox Marvel. Don't get me started Marvel, on those. But, but Marvel Studios... Um, I feel like they take a lot of time thinking about these changes. You know what I mean? Like, I don't think they just do them for controversy. I think they sit down and really think about it before they actually do yeah, it. Especially so, for a major change for a character like that. Uh, I think they're pretty go- They're going to, I kind of think they're going to go along the lines of, okay, we're going to make a major change to the appearance of this character. We're still going to go more or less close to the comics as we possibly can. Right. That's why I feel right. that what they're doing. I could be completely wrong, but that's just, my personal feeling on that. Well, and of course, uh, you know, and, and I'm going to put minor spoilers on this video. I don't want to say what happens to her yet till we get to the oh, end no, of when we talk about all that stuff. But, uh, but I think she did a great job and um, I'm okay with the change to that. So uh, let's move on to the way magic is portrayed in this movie, because I think it's a very interesting thing. A lot of people feel like Harry Potter is the movie standard for how we look at magic in film. And, I mean, I don't, I love Harry, the Harry Potter movies, not all of them, but as a whole, I think it's a really interesting movie series. Um, people that read the books, I think you said you read the books for Well, Harry Potter, I'm right? reading the first one, a friend of mine from work, uh, let me, she let me borrow the first book, so I'm kind of thumbing through that, right. but I actually never see, I've seen bits and pieces of some of the Harry Potter movies. Okay. And actually, right. one criticism I would say about this movie, uh, spoilers, I actually really like the movie, but one criticism <laughs> I really would say, uh, I would have is the, the magic. It was more like hand to hand, kind of mm-hmm. fist fighting ish. Right. Because uh, right. I was expecting more. If I heard other people talk about this, I was expecting more almost Dragon Ball Z type stuff with beams and fireballs and magic missiles flying everywhere. I was kind of mm-hmm. expecting that, but what we got it still wasn't bad. But uh, I was still kind of expecting you know the Dragon Ball Z spectacle. Okay, yeah, I, I understand that. I think what Marvel was doing with the magic in this movie, and, and again, this all comes down to personal preference, was because they're introducing everybody to magic. They're like, okay, our magic, the foundation of our magic is going to be a martial arts foundation instead of the traditional wizards and witches type stuff that we see in film. Because we have Iron Fist coming out you know, next year. We know that's going to be tied to the martial to magic and martial arts and mysticism and we right now agents of shield is dealing with ghost rider and a lot of the elements of the dark hold which is a book that's also a magic book from marvel comics which is a dark magic i think what they were trying to do with dr strange is and this might just be the platform i mean this might not be the standard this could be just their way of doing it is we're going to introduce it into a way that makes magic seem real like something that could actually be a real thing maybe we will get the big dragon ball z beams of light and stuff because we do have infinity war coming up and i have a feeling that if dr strange is really going to go all out i think it's going to be you know during that movie like i think we'll see him go crazy in that movie so I don't know. I, I mean, uh, so you said it didn't it didn't bother you. You just expected yeah, something. Didn't, a little I bit still more. liked it. It was uh, it was still it was fine the way it was. Mainly because I kind of oh, there was this anime that actually I'll call Fairy Tale. I'm sure all the your weeboos out there know who know about Fairy Tale. But anyway, and that's <laughs> in that anime is basically about a wizards guild, and but all the quote unquote wizards in it. Because uh, there's one character in particular out there off the top of my head named uh, Gray Philbuster. He's a quote unquote ice wizard he's straight up punching kicking people in the face and dude's kind of freaking ripped and this is supposed to be a wizard <laughs> all right cool whatever it's cool this is it's a fun anime and it's, it's almost like i see this going not that they ripped off of right not that they ripped off the anime it's like i see it kind of going down that route it's like magic's more or less your key manipulation and your um you know with the flow of your arms your limbs and everything that's mm-hmm. basically doing the components of the spell and then it, it's you know it 
I can't get words out. <laughs> and basically, it's like the, I, yeah, I, the, I understand the yeah, flow of your, uh, your body and everything that makes the spell right. flow out and all that stuff. So I think that's kind of where they're so going. Ba- Right, so similar to this movie where the movements and the motions of the martial arts actually create the spells, yeah, is what it, you're saying. Say, every time he tried to make that portal, he had to make that circle with his hand is the whole right. source code of the universe and all that right. manipulation and stuff. So yeah, I think that's what they're going for. Also, if uh, in D&D, there's, um, you know, somatic uh, spell components was basically your hand movements and all that. So it's mm-hmm. it's all there. Right, right. Like I said, it's not too far. I did expect the, um, you know, the the Dragon Ball Z type stuff, but no, what they did, it, it falls within like you know the whole magic mythos that everyone's familiar with. So I'm, I was fine. Right, right. Well, I think, and and again, I understand. I think we'll see more of that as we get you know into the bigger like uh, group films or whatever. So before we get into spoiler territory, because I do want to, I am going to talk about spoilers for just a couple of minutes before we give our final score. I want to talk about something that seems to be um, a point of contention in a lot of reviews. And and we're going to talk about the villain here in this movie. And I don't think it's a big secret. Everybody's kind of seen the pictures of Mads Mikkelsen as Caecilius with the, you know, the purple eyes and everything. I mean, that's been on a lot of the advertising. So I, I don't really consider that a spoiler. Um, but let's talk about the quality of the villain, because I do think that's something that a lot of people have talked about in the Marvel movies about like the villains, not always being compelling villains. And I'm not, I'm not going to jump and white knight Marvel. I'm not going to be the Marvel typical Marvel fanboy and defend everything they've done. They've had some villains that I think weren't as great as they could be. Yeah. It's, you know, um, I do think that Marvel gets a bad rap because not everyone can be Heath Ledger. You know what I mean? Not everybody can be the Joker from Dark Knight. Yeah. Not everybody can be Loki from Thor. You know, not everybody can be the Winter Soldier. I mean, these characters, the villains that we really love in movies, take a lot of groundwork to build up. And when you're introducing a character like Doctor Strange, and you're like, we have two hours to give this character an origin story, it doesn't give you a lot of time to make a compelling villain. I mean, yeah. you don't really have a lot of time for that. What do you think? How do you feel about the portrayal of this villain in the in the movie overall? Like coming from somebody who isn't invested in this character, like a lot of char- like a lot of the fans are, from a relatively unknown villain. What did you think of Cassilius in this movie and and his motivations in this movie? I kind of thought he was here, basic run in the mill. I'm gonna destroy the world, villain. It was nothing too mm-hmm. special about him. I mean, I thought his uh, he kind of looked cool. What but he also looked kind of plainish. But then again, that was the whole aesthetic of the uh, the whole wizards there, or well, the sources mm-hmm. there. And I don't know. I just thought he was rather boring. He he could have been so much cooler, but he just really didn't have enough screen time. It's like he didn't have enough right. lines. He didn't have. Well, he had like one kind of funny quip when uh, he first meets uh, Doctor Strange. Uh, mm-hmm. That was about it, really. Other than that, he was—I figured he was very forgettable. Well, that's that's another slight criticism I would have with this movie. The, the villain in this is slightly forgettable. Okay, so I'm gonna give. I thought about this a lot, and I really, like I said, when I watch a lot of the reviews and read a lot of reviews of this movie, and they talk about the villain, I try to figure out where I think they were they were going with this character, right? So, um. Before we get into this, because at this point I'm going to put a spoiler stamp right here in the video, (laughs) big spoiler stamp. Before we get into this, we're going to be crossing over into spoiler territory. So if you don't want to be spoiled, you can skip this. And if you go down to my info box, I will have a link for the final score. You guys can come back and check that out. But if you don't care about spoilers, then here we go, right? So uh, the thing is, the Ancient One was using the Dark Dimension to power herself to stay alive for a prolonged period of time, for thousands of years. And we find that out in the movie. And this uh, Cassilius character was considered to be her, one of her like prime students, one of her best students who found out about the book and wanted to learn more about the dark dimension. And he took the book or took the pages from the book and tried to open up this portal for Dormammu, who, by the way, that, that's why I put the spoiler thing there. Uh, open up the door for Dormammu to come through and have the Dark Dimension take over the Earth. Now, so what I think they were trying to do with this character, and you could tell me if you agree with me or not after I'm done explaining this, was I think they were trying to 
show a like the fact that the ancient one felt responsible for Cassilius leaving and doing this um at the same time she was doing the same thing and she felt guilty because she felt like he knew she was doing it because I think Cassilius knew that the ancient one was using the dark dimension I think he knew that we never got that official you know things it wasn't spoken in the yeah. film but I think he knew that she was doing that. And so I think what they were trying to portray in the movie, at least I give them, you know, uh, I give him a little credit for trying to do it, was that he was a character who wasn't necessarily a bad guy. He was doing what he thought she was doing, but he wanted to be the one to make everything right. Like, I feel like he was tricked. Dormammu tricked him and he was he was convinced that by bringing the dark dimension into earth or putting earth in the dark dimension, that he was going to be saving everybody. And maybe he looked at her because he always said that, you know, the reason why I say, I think he knew what she was doing was there was a lot of foreshadowing from his character when he was talking about why he was doing it in reference to her specifically. And a lot of it to me was him trying to convey that she's been doing this all along and she's not letting anybody else do it. So what we're going to do is we're going to open this portal and give this to everybody else. And I think that's what they, what they were trying to portray with that character. I just don't think it was done well enough. I feel like there may be some deleted scenes or some stuff that was left on the cutting room floor with this character that we didn't get to see. Because I think the best moment that we got with Cassilius and Doctor Strange was the scene where he's locked up in that device and he's talking with Doctor Strange. Because I feel like that is the most honest conversation that we got from him through the entire movie absolutely yeah because if is if you remember they were saying that he was a he was battered and broken man and he lost his family he mm -hmm. pretty much he would when he came to uh Kairesh or what was that was that place called i can't remember when he went there he was he lost everything and he was just clamoring for something anything mm -hmm. and then he probably somewhere in one of the deleted scenes or in the you know, and uh, before the events of the movie, the Marvel right. comes to him and say, "Hey, I can help you fix everything if you bring Earth into my realm. Here's how it, here's mm -hmm. what, how it will work. Here's how you can do it." But this right. person is stopping me. Yeah, so uh, it's yeah, he felt he was doing the right thing by just stopping death completely, but. Is it kind of like uh, it's a deal with the devil? You, he'll give you what you want, but it's not exactly what you want. Yeah, and I think that she was trying to train Doctor Strange because she wanted that to be her swan song, like her redemption yeah. song against Cassius. Yeah, it's kind of so, like Dormammu uh, was saying, "Like, hey, she's using the, she's using my power. Look at her. I can help you. Right. I can yeah. help you do this to everybody." I kind of think that's what was going on with them. Right. Right. So. Um, yeah, so I do think the criticism is is uh, deserved for the villain. I don't think that uh, I, I think the director was trying to do something, and I just don't yeah, think it just kind of fell flat. They were achieve it right, but I think all the other elements of the movie, you know, as far as the humor, because there was a lot of humor in this movie to go along with the serious yeah. stuff. Um, we haven't had an origin story like this since Ant Man, so it's been a lot of movies uh, since we've had anything like this. Uh, and it did really well in the box office because we're recording this on Tuesday. And as of right now, I think it's like close to 400 million worldwide, which oh, is wow. incredible. Um, and I think Marvel's guaranteed, it's guaranteed to get a sequel now at this point. Uh, and Doramamu, uh, real quick before we give our final score, cause it is running up on 20 minutes here. Um, Doramamu is introduced in this film and, uh, I think we talked about this a little bit as well, Josh, uh, off recording oh, yeah. here, um, that he's going to be the big bad for the next phase of Marvel films. Yeah. I, I really think that's what they're setting him up for. Um, and also the scene where he, you know, he finally, you know, meets Dormammu. I'll, that was, has to be my favorite sequence out of the entire movie. Uh, the Dr. Strange scene with Dormammu. Yes. Yeah, where he's manipulating time. Yeah, he came, uh, comes back because it's he's they're about to the bad guys are about to win, and he's basically just has to go up to him and just just say, "Hey, look, I'm here to make a bargain." Because right. you cannot beat an elder god tier demon like that. <laughs> most definitely, most definitely. So, um, before we wrap this up and give our final score, I want to say the special effects were amazing. It was a great movie. 
Um, uh, and I would highly suggest people to go see it in theaters. Don't wouldn't you say that yeah, as well? I honestly believe the special effects team deserve an Oscar for this. They they were incredible. Yeah. How they basically just manipulated all of the uh, scenery and made it have have all these tiles and everything. And mm -hmm. especially, I don't know if you really knows that because uh, or really informed of about like you know sacred geometry and all the you know all the weird right. patterns that they had and all that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I actually kind of look and I just find it fascinating. I don't really believe in a lot of the new age stuff. I just find it fascinating how they actually incorporated a lot of that quote unquote sacred geometry stuff and the Fibonacci uh, mm -hmm. sequences and stuff. If you know what that is, look it up. It's kind of interesting. <laughs> yeah, it was very cool. I think they did a great job. So <clears throat> let's give our final scores on this movie because I think we've talked, we've just covered just about everything you can cover without going directly yeah, I can into go the story of the film. <laughs> Um, so, uh, I'm going to say that I thought this was a very strong movie. We had two Marvel films this year. We had Civil War and we had Doctor Strange. Um, I love Doctor Strange. Don't get me wrong. I still feel like, uh, Civil War is like the, you know, the epitome of comic book films. Like, I think they just did everything right with Civil War. I have literally no criticism about it. And I think the one thing about Civil War that edges it out for me between these two Marvel films this year is Civil War had a great villain arc with the Winter Soldier and all the stuff that happened in that movie. So for me, I'm going to say Doctor Strange. And I struggle with this a little bit because it's it's I'm a half point off of what I want to give it. I think I feel like Doctor Strange is sort of in the Star Trek category from the Star Trek movie this movie this year. Um, in sense of like entertainment. And I think it's a great Marvel film, but I'm going to say based on the villains, lack of development and, um, some of the, the stuff that happened between him and his relationship with, uh, Dr. Palmer that we had in the movie, uh, yeah. which we didn't talk about that here. I just feel like there's a couple things they dropped and they missed on that. Uh, I'm going to give it a really solid eight out of 10. I think it's a really solid eight out of 10. I almost gave it an 8.5. But I'm going to say 8 out of 10. I feel very comfortable giving it that score, which is not a bad score at all. I just, um, again, like you were talking about the magic, they didn't really ramp it up as much as I think they could have done. Uh, for me as a comic book fan, they could have went 100% and I would have been okay with it. Um, and I think the villain wasn't well developed. But I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. I think it's a great score. I highly recommend this movie. What what would you give it as your final score? And what would you say your reasons are for your final score? I honestly would have given it a 9. The reason I would have given it a 9 is, for one, is I am a special effects whore. I love any movie, no matter how bad it is. If it has great special <laughs> effects, I would at least enjoy the special effects. Like the uh, second uh, Transformer movie, that movie was god-awful. Special effects are still pretty cool. But uh, right. I w honestly wanted to give it a 9.5, but like I said, the villain kind of was, Caecilius was mm -hmm. kind of meh. Um, one part when he was messing, when he was talking with his, uh, earlier in the movie where he was talking, you know, uh, Dr. Palmer, was it? The other, right, yeah. Right, Dr. Palmer, It was, yeah. was kind of like, okay, you don't believe in all this magic stuff, but you literally just saw his astral form not five minutes ago. <laughs> Come on. It right, was like right, other little right. nitpicks so, here. It's kind of like, eh, I'm going to give it a nine. I, I still thoroughly okay. enjoyed the movie. It's not perfect. Nowhere, it's nowhere near perfect. It's still pretty good. Right. Right. Well, that's good. So I give it an eight, good eight, almost an 8.5. Josh gives it a nine. He loves it. It's probably one of your favorite Marvel films. Yeah, this say, is like, my favorite Marvel film. Uh, like I, okay, I crapped that's... on it a little bit, being, but still, I loved it. Okay, so I think we're going to wrap it up here. Um, I hope you guys go out and see the movie. And if you have seen it, let me know down in the comments. Me and Josh would love to hear from you and see what you have to say about the movie. Uh, I'm going to put all of Josh's uh, links in the info box so you can hit him up as well he, uh, all over the internet, anywhere he's got stuff. Mostly Twitch. Yeah. That's where he hangs I out. I still stream sporadically. So. Uh, so, yeah, anyway, thanks a lot, guys, and we will chat with you later. Take care. Yeah.